thank you so much. I'd like to bring back the director of the film on stage and uh, to get a big round of applause for him. It's a very daring film. <laughs> So it looks like you have some explaining to do. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to ask a few questions and then we can uh, open it up to the audience. Um, I believe that your first film also believed um, was also set in the world of uh, yeshivas. So it seems, you know, that the uh, world of uh, faith and God and uh, spirituality is very important to you. So can you talk a little bit um, of this as an inspiration for you as a filmmaker? Um, yes, it's um, set in the orthodox uh, Jewish uh, world, but uh, I think uh, this is not really the issue. The issue is uh, belief. Uh, and uh, if I may say belief in general, uh, belief that doesn't really concern religion, it's concerned uh, human being and his ability in existing in life. And this is what uh, fascinating me about uh, belief. I chose um, to set the stories in uh, those kind of places because it's for me um, a very fast and easy way to deal with um, um, general and uh, universal aspect of belief because this world is uh, well known and he have his certain rules and I don't will need to um, make a lot of effort to explain the world. It's like an uh, um, uh, ancient world that uh, he, he have his own certain rule and is close to the society. So it's give me this contrast to, to deal with different things that religion itself. I don't think my films is about Judaism. It's in about belief. I mean, there's a relationship with religion and God also. So, you know, in a way the character seems to lose certain things but gain a lot, but it does have difficulty relating and translating this to people around him. Um, there's also, you know, the way the father deals with religion and belief and love with his son that kind of goes full circle and that's also pretty interesting and to discuss. Yeah. Uh, eventually it's, it's going to the place that I, I tried to explain before that th the conflict of the father is eventually being a father, not being a religion. If he can do it like as a father, not as a believer, uh, this kind of execute it in, in the end of this film. Um, and and, and I, I think I discussed this thing with the actors and, and we don't really get in, in a certain answer for that. Eventually I, I just, told them to do it and and that's it. Don't add to that any feeling or nothing. Um, I, I think you can see in, in this film that the father don't really behave as a typical uh, rush a religion person. is more a, as a caring and loving father. So for me it's about fatherhood more than about religion person that try to educate his son. You were mentioning the actor. Uh, I believe that the main actor is a um, non-professional, and uh, I guess that's his first film. So yeah. can you talk about how you discover him, um, and how you directed him to play this way? I mean, he has very little dialogue, and no psychological explanation for what he does, so I, it might be maybe difficult for someone who's just uh, starting a film, or maybe easier? Um, the, the big advantage of choosing the main actor, although he's a non-actor, that he's coming from this world, meaning he ex-Orthodox Jew. Uh, he left religion around age 15, so he's, uh, um, 
in his know what he's doing. Um, the, the really hard um, thing about him is to first to cast him because he's not registered register in any uh, agency of uh, acting. And uh, so I, I, I scout for the for main actor around two years. And um, the, the second big thing that I need to deal with uh, this kind of thing is, is how to teach, to teach him basic thing about acting. And uh, obviously the, the script really helped this kind of thing because there's a lot of action that he need to do, like basic stuff to go to there, to put that feeling in his hand, to close the, the water and all this kind of little action that he can be focused on it and and kind of think that he need to do this normal ritual human being behavior. So it's kind of Berson model thing of just the action of the character. I, I think he's, he's quite amazing. I'm I just also think so. I'm just wondering if you think he's gonna make more films after this? So. Actually, this film uh, changed his life because he is now studying uh, filmmaking. He wants oh. to become a filmmaker <laughs> itself. Oh, he wants to become a filmmaker. Yeah. Okay. He suffered too much as an actor to go back into that. <laughs> no, no, he's also doing acting. Yeah, I, I think he has now a new role in a new feature film. Um, uh, but uh, he also wants to be uh, behind the camera because I think he joined the conversation that we had together. I have, uh, because he's a non-actor, a very long process with him. So we spend a lot of time together. Uh, I also would like to talk about the cinematography of the film. Uh, it's, it's beautiful black and white. It's, it's scope, uh, which is not very common. So can you talk about your decision to shoot this way? Um, were you thinking about any film references or what, may, what did it mean to you? Black and white. I, I I know from the from the moment I came with the idea to make this film that it will be black and white because for me it's a story about life and death, and uh, this life and death thing it's 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 a contrast of two forces for me, and and life if it's supposed to be in this film is supposed to be in the gray area. It's, that it's not about color, it's about the gray, the story of the gray. And um, th 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 this was, altered my cinematographer, we shot this film in, in red camera and we, we shot it with a camera that uh, eventually the picture is, was color and we just switched off the color in the, in the grading. Uh, all the time on the set, the, the, the cinematographer had hope that we still keep the color in the film. <laughs> so I, I all the time told him, forget about it. I know from top it will be black and white. I just felt inside so strongly about this thing. And endoscope? It, we just, this is just a technical thing. We just mm. did a lot of uh, tests with different formats. Uh, we shot test in relocation, and and it seems much more right to shoot uh, in, in scope. We didn't have like a vision or meaning behind that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, with some of the topic in the film, I'm thinking of the resurrection scene. One kind of you know you think about like you know Carl Dreyer and maybe two Carlos Regatta. Also, you start with a theme that would end their films. So, is that any sort of influence on you? Like, were you thinking of like maybe Dreyer or Bergman, or I was thinking of sort of Kiblovsky. Um Can you talk about filmmakers maybe that made you want to work in film? Um, I'm yeah, obviously they influence me. Uh, I don't have a specific uh, master that I'm really. I also get inspiration from literature of Franz Kafka and George Bataille. Um, and, and the the necrophilia scene, it's, it's homage to um, Gustave Courbet, the French painter. Um, 
So, so it's it's mixture of a lot of things that influence me. It's not really one thing, and and, and regard the the the, um, the radical thing of putting this erection or the final uh, scene with the, the necrophilia. I, I don't see it. For me, it's not that provocative because it's it's all material that that can be in the film or out the film. I don't see it like a taboo, it's part of life. All this, in that case. Uh, I have one last question and then we can open it up. Um, the score, I mean, and I mean the sound in the film, there's very little music. I think there's maybe two scenes with music. Uh, so a lot of silence, which work really well with the theme of the film. So can you also talk about your decision to just have a um, a soundtrack that's so like striking in the editing and then with no music or none? Um, yes, I, I, I mentioned it before when I present the film that I, I kind of, my dream is to make a film that is totally mute that, uh, but it with a lot of information. Um, uh, I think it's because I really um, appreciate and love and kind of miss uh, the, the, the early early days of how cinema uh, born to the world. Uh, it's it's pure way of uh, telling story by image. So it's when when I write the script, I write basically to scripts in the same time, one with full of dialogue, and the uh, other script is the real script that I eventually gonna be shoot. It's the the, the same thing but without dialogue. I'm I'm adjust the, the, the scenes with the dialogue and try to figure out and solve it that it can be told without any dialogue. So it for me it's all the time talking with images, with pictures. Do you think you'll make a completely silent film? I already make one. It's a short one, mm -hmm. uh, but it's. I, I don't think it can be for the cinema. It's it's been presented in galleries mm -hmm. because it's kind of very avant-garde. And uh, uh, is there any question? I see one here. Okay, so it, I mean, it's a common question about uh, reasoning for the mother uh, not to let his under the sun? Um, there's a lot of scene in, in the, this film that uh, have specific uh, reason, it's like a realistic reason why they operate like this, this specific group. Um, it's, it's kind of grab itsel itself and built up the, the, the world of the movie. You don't need to understand everything, you just, just need to get the flavor and, and feel what is give you eventually. Um, s if I can mark specifically why the mother is closing the windows, because it's really like the little brother said, it's not modest for them to show off, and and this is a, a orthodox neighborhood, so they live in a very uh, modest, quiet, close way. Uh, there's a question there. Why did you choose to make a film about this subject matter and community? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> this idea that just struck me and I'm getting out at night from bed and write it down. I don't know. Um, I don't know how to approach this question. I, it's just maybe I will say that, as I said before, I don't see this topic as a taboo. I know it's kind of shocking as, um, I don't know, um, society to, to, to contain acrophilia and all this kind of disturbing behavior, not as taboo, but 
if, if I'm trying to um, be radical in, in belief or what uh, going through existentialist crisis in human being, so there's no taboo. Uh, there's a question there. So I mean, pretty I mean, pretty much it's like, how did you get the fee made and get finance here to follow you? Um, I didn't get a lot of money to make this film. Uh, it was like a um, guerrilla production. Uh, I know it don't look like a guerrilla production, but it was. Um, I don't think about the audience. This I, I don't I don't believe this is my job. It's although I was one of the producer of the film because it's allow me to do whatever I want. <laughs> I am not the producer that think about the audience. <laughs> well, as an artist, do you think about how people will perceive your film? Uh, no. No. <laughs> as a spectator, because you are watching the film, do you get something else from... Can you distance yourself when you watch a film and just see it as a piece of art? Uh, or you just see what you've done? I, I didn't, sp specific today, I didn't see s the film for a very long time, so it's for me kind of nostalgic way to remember how it was on the set, that's it. Uh, yes. Can you, can, um, do you have any like uh, specifically references to religion, Kabbalism, or the Torah that you would like, or Zohar, that you would like to discuss? No. Uh, mm. This is not what was my uh, reference to structure this film. There's a lot of things in the, the film that I'm not aware of. <laughs> yeah. uh, Very in the back. Is it a question about your, f your future project? <laughs> yes, uh, I'm currently writing uh, two projects. Uh, one is uh, for the audience, it's mainstream film. <laughs> <laughs> it's a spy thriller and it's uh, based on a book. Uh, and the uh, other one is more radical than this film. I'm just preparing a backup. <laughs> if I need to wait for a long time to, for funding. Uh, the radical project is basically uh, part three of this trilogy because this is the second this film is the second one and is also taking place in the orthodox uh, Jewish community and that's it we have time for two more questions um, uh, there was someone else in the back yes I think it's a, it's a reference to the other film playing a new director called Mountain uh, which I I don't know if you've seen. I, uh, I didn't see it. So it's maybe it's more a comment for the programmer who just like <laughs> movies about certain taboo displayed on screen. <laughs> um, but it's a great film too. Mm -hmm. I will see it in so Israel. Okay. <laughs> uh, and we have time for one last question. Yeah. Uh, did you have any specific challenges shooting in the community? Yes, obviously. Uh, <laughs> um, most of the film we shot in in interior in location, so it wasn't in the in the um, neighbor neighborhood. But the, the scene that we shot outside, it was only me uh, as also the director and the cinematographer and the uh, main character, the Chaim Aaron, and I was dressing like Hasidic and the actor was dressed like Hasidic, and obviously people approach us because you cannot shoot in th those places, and tell me what are you doing over here, and I just lied and I said that uh, my actor ha is going to be married, and I'm preparing a wedding uh, clip for him, <laughs> so they just said Mazel Tov and uh, leave us alone. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, we are out of time for tonight, but thank you so much for coming here thank and you. presenting the film. Thank you.